Because, because some students are not able to attend. I don't know why. I am trying to. OK, are you able to see the slides now I am sharing? Yes, Professor. OK, yes, sir. Uh, last last lecture I introduced you to aggregate demand supply. Then today I'm going to. Uh, did I see? Uh, let me check if I recording because I have to record this. OK, let me go. OK. Uh, today we will jump up to the elasticity, but before this I will give you some information about the functions, supply function and demand, and then how it is affecting and changing the market structure. As you know, the market supply functions tells us how the quantity of goods supplied by the sum of all producers in the market depends on the various factors such as price, wages and some others. And the supply curve plots the aggregate quantity of goods that will be offered for sale at different points and price levels. And this is then the representation of this. The supply curve for wheat in Canada is represented. The price as much as increase as you are observing, it is enlarging and increasing the quantity bushels produced. The law of supply definition of supply curve states that the quantity of goods offered increases when the price of the good increases. Therefore, there is a proportional relationship between price and uh, quantity supplied. And there is empirical regularity. The level of supply, I think you can switch your microphone and if you have question, you can open it. The supply curve shifts when factors other than own price changes. If the change increases, the willingness of producers to offer the good at the same price, the supply curve shifts right, isn't it? If the change decreases, the willingness of producers to offer the goods at the same price, the supply curve shifts left. This is then reduction. The move along the supply curve for a good can only be triggered by changing the price of, the go of that good. And the shift in the supply curve for a good can be triggered by change in any other factors and change that affect the producer's willingness to offer the good. As you know, supply curve is affected and changed and shifted to the higher level if the factors of production, if ceteris paribus means everything stay change, they not change, and only some price changes and other things uh, not change, realized, and this will then cause some shifts to the uh, left or to the right. It is depending whether it goes up or down. And from this point of view, we are understanding that the supply curve is affected from the factors of production, the employee wages, the consumer uh, preferences, which is going to be uh, used for the uh, 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 shop for buying some goods and services, the market structure, the diversification of the goods and services which is in the market and innovation, technology uh, and some other factors are affecting and changing supply curve. If you are giving a simplest example for the supply equation is P, as you know, it is plus because there is a proportional relationship and 0 0.5, 0 0.05 is the slope of this curve and supposed to be the Wheat production is affected from the rainfalls, and the slope of this graph is then 0 0.05, which is going to be represented. And the QS is the quantity wheat, then P is the price. 
And suppose price is rise to two dollar and quantity supplied no rainfall is supposed to be two dollar and quantity supplied with rainfall of three is then going to be 2.15. As rainfall increases, supply curve shifts rise because it is positively affecting and changing the wheat production, as you are observing from this simplest example. And R is supposed to be 4, then it goes to be then Q, then applied to the equation P plus 0.2 for the given example. Then the price then is on the vertical and Q quantity on the X then is represented the supply with no rainfall as it is indicated zero and then rainfall is enlarging and increasing the supply as you are observing 0.0.15 uh, and then this has meant then this is then positive reaction for this supply curve because rainfall or drought is negatively affecting and rainfall is positively affecting this especially in the agricultural sector as you know uh, this is very important uh, factors for the production operation process. The law of the demand, the definition law of the demand curve states that the quantity of the good offered increase when the price of this good decreases. This is then how it is realized. There is inverse proportional relationship between the price and quantity. And the shift can be caused on the figure increase in demand are shown by a shift to the right in the demand curve. This could be caused by a number of factors, including a rise in the income. As you know, as much as your income is enlarged and increased, your demand capacity or the consumption is expected to enlarge either, whether it is supplementary or implementary goods or foods or necessary foodstuff or luxurious. It is depending the elasticity and affecting and changing this market structure to the higher level. This lecture is then giving you the information how this elasticity affects and change this market structure. And a rise in the price of the substitute or a fall in the price of the complement is introduced. Here it is. You are observing here where the price is shifted up. The price is going down, the quantity enlarged or vice versa quantity reduced if the price up or quantity enlarged if the price down. And if price stay intact, as you are observing, the demand is expected to shift to the right because whether it is supplementary or implementary or uh, let's say components of the two complement uh, goods like, like, uh, Ray, like CD and CD player, are uh, depending to these uh, changes if the price of the uh, let's say cd player is reduced people enlarge the cd shop or cd consumption similarly the supplementary is also same if the price of the x is increased the price of the y will decrease then it is expected that this will then shift also to the right but similarly if the price is stay intact and the other price is shifted to the up then this has meant the price is positively affecting this uh, let's say x product and shifted demand curve to the right again this is how it is uh, affecting and changing the market sector but it is all dependent to the elasticity which means necessary food food stuff as i mentioned to you in the first lecture is usually is becoming inelastic because we are consuming water, milk, dairy products, uh, some meat, poultry products. These are very important uh, for our everyday life. Therefore, we are not uh, very dependent to these uh, price changes because we need to drink water. We need to drink some, uh, uh, let's say, milk for the babies, especially for the children. We need to eat some salary, uh, seller, uh, let's say wheat products like such as bread and some other uh, meal products or maybe some cereals or some other necessary food stuff that we are consuming in everyday life, poultry and dairy products is uh, not very heavily dependent to the price changes because we have to buy but for the luxurious products maybe you can give up you can uh, give up uh, eating chocolate or chocolate or some other cakes or some other luxury consumptions that you don't need to buy cigarette consumption alcohol or these things that is not 
if you are not dependent. Of course, you don't have to buy if the price is going up and up. This is uh, the reason why the tax is always up employed and upload to this kind of uh, products for reducing the consumption because it is also not good for the health. Therefore, these products that is uh, subjected to the market and affected from the elasticity usually uh, play with the taxes and uh, affected from the tax and the income or the price changes. But some others are not because of these are not um, luxuries or not or other products than uh, necessary foodstuffs. The market equilibrium definition, a market equilibrium is a price such that the price, the quantities demanded and supplied are at the same level. And this is then the probably the best possible option or co combination of the demand and supply. Uh, let's say the consumption and the produce goods and services in the market where are the best possible price and the quantity realized. The market for cranberries given here, the SD is the SD is the demand curve, 500 minus 4P. We have four is the slope of this curve and QS is minus 100 plus 2P. Here the intercept, as you are observing, 500 unit is supposed to be zero. Price is consumed and minus 100 at zero price is supposed to, which is not realized. And where P is the price of the cranberry and Q is the demand of the supply in millions of barrels a year and price of the cranberries in euros per barrel is represented. Then the market for cranberries, then if you want to uh, trying to find the equilibrium price and the, uh, for this uh, uh, given example, then we put the two parties to the equation and solve it. And then we have the equilibrium price for 100. To get to equilibrium quantity, you have to in supply and employ in insert into the equation. And then, then when you are going to find the QS and QD same, for the, I mean, supply equation and the demand equation. If it is same, this means the equilibrium is realized. As you are observing here, here is realized because when you put the 100 to the equation, 500 minus 4 plus 4 multiplied with 100 will then gives you 100. And minus 100 plus 2 times 100 then will give you again 100. This is then supply and demand is in the equation and will become into the equilibrium position. Then the market from cranberry is then represented as it is given here. As you see here, the equation for the supply is given. Is 50 here, as you see, is the intercept. And here is the 125 is again for the price for the intercept for the zero market where nobody buys and demanded. And then when you have the intersection, you are having 100 and 100 for this given example at any scenario. The market equilibrium, if at a given price, sellers cannot sell as much as they would like, there is excess supply, which means this is then overproduction. This is then not desired because the price is too high maybe or because something else you produce, uh, produce, but the demand is not realized because they don't like it. They didn't demand it. And if a given price, buyers cannot purchase as much as they would like, there is also excess demand because, as I said to you, they don't like it. They don't want to buy it because of the price, because of the quality, because of whatever it is. Therefore, this surplus is not good for the economy and it is uh, expected to reduce it to the below the equilibrium for maintaining at least a sustainable economical structure. The excess supply in the market for cranberries, again, when we flash back, then we have here, as you see, then shift the supply because of this excess supply. And as you see, the price is going up and the expected, as you see, the demand becomes a little bit larger at this level should be, but nobody will buy this because it is too high for the market structure. And this is somehow expected that this will then shift in the next season to the lower level because nobody will demand it because it is surplus. And when it is surplus at that level, at that price, will then the force the market, this invisible hand, force the people or the market structure to reduce the price level 
or at least to change the quality or whatever it is which is affecting and causing the surplus for uh, let's say promoting the demand for enlarging the demand capacity at least uh, for maintaining the equilibrium level. If there is no excess supply or excess demand, there is no pressure for price to change and we are in equilibrium. And when a change in an exogenous variable causes the demand curve or the supply curve to shift, the equilibrium shift as well. We are here then the elasticity, as I mentioned to you, we are jumping to the elasticity for being able to understand what is the causes for this elasticity. And as you are observing here, the elasticity is very important, as I mentioned to you, as much as, uh, as you are understanding, as much as if the elasticity, if the demand is more elastic, which means more flatter, it will then bring the market to the equilibrium. If you are understanding or remembering from your former classes, if the demand is more elastic, which means more flatter, more horizontal to the x-axis, and the supply is more vertical, in this market structure, we are understanding that this price changes without any intervention to the economy because of this elasticity position of the market, let's say wheat production or cranberries production. If the demand is more flatter, more uh, horizontal, more parallel to the x-axis, this market structure uh, instantaneously will bring the market structure to the equilibrium in the seasonal deviation. Therefore, there is no need to intervene to the market. In the opposite case, if the supply is more elastic, which means now supply is more flat there, then this will then cause movements away from the equilibrium because now if you are uh, knowing this cobweb theorem or if you know the spider net's work this seasonal deviation if you draw this uh, on your graph on your paper the uh, the supply and uh, demand uh, let's say uh, lines just uh, vert, uh, just uh, linear line, not uh, non-linear, linear curve. Uh, you draw just uh, a vertical, let's say, supply, a little bit verti more vertical supply and more horizontal, let's say, flatter demand and put any point the, uh, let's say, price level and try to move on this, um, cross supply demand uh, lines, you will see it will bring you to the equilibrium because supply is more elastic. In the opposite case, when you are having this uh, supply more elastic and demand more vertical, this will then bring you out to the equilibrium. This will move away from the equilibrium. And this is the reason of this elasticity problem in the economy. Therefore, Let's look up to the elasticity. What is elasticity and why it is affecting and changing our, uh, let's say, market structure. As you know, the elasticity is delta Q over delta P is the differentiation or percentage change in the quantity will be divided to the percentage change in the price. Or percentage change, this is the generally used formula, or the percentage change in the quantity will be divided to the former price pt minus 1 will be divided, qt minus 1, sorry, divided to the delta p, which means the differentiation of the price, will be divided to the pt minus 1, which means the former price or the initial price in this market structure will be divided to the differentiation of the prices. And when you are putting to the normal form, delta Q over delta P will be multiplied with P T minus one divided to the Q T minus, which means the price of the initial position of the market and Q initial position of the quantity, which is uh, introduced into the uh, market. The elasticity is not the slope 
but it is somehow the slope. Partially, it is the slope. Delta Q over delta P is the slope. Is the slope because when you are looking to the uh, demand equation and the supply equation, after this intercept A minus B, P, for example, B is the slope, and slope is delta Q over delta P, which is used for the elasticity. The slope is the ratio of the absolute changes in the quantity and prices, and as you are observing here, delta Q over delta P will give you this slope, and you can use this B in the equation for calculating this elasticity. And elasticity is the ratio of relative or percentage changes in the quantity and prices. Therefore, this will then help you to estimate the elasticity in this regard. Uh, we are going to classify the elasticity, what kind of elasticity we are going to use in this microeconomics. As you see, if the elasticity of demand we are talking about, uh, elasticity of price demanded, if it is zero, we may say perfectly inelastic demand. Quantity demanded is completely insensitive to changes in prices. And if the elasticity is between minus one and zero, which is usually expected, is inelastic demand. The quantity demand is, is relatively insensitive to changes in prices. And if the elasticity is minus one, is equal to the minus one, just minus one, it is then the unitary elastic demand. This percentage change increase in quantity demanded equals percentage decrease in price. <coughs> and when we are looking to the uh, fourth, where there is between minus one and infinitive zero, sorry, infinitive, uh, minus infinitive, there is elastic demand, which means above minus one, then we have elastic demand. If something you calculate the elasticity for demand, price of the demand, then this is then the quantity demand that is relatively sensitive to change in price. Therefore, every change in price will then affect demand quantity demanded. And if perfectly elastic demand, then we have then infinitive elastic price or infinitive elastic, uh, let's say, uh, demanded in this case. An increase in price results in quantity demanded decreasing to zero, suppose. An increase in price results in quantity demanded increasing to infinity. This is then expected. Then example, if it is given to you, as you are observing, we gave here then the demand equation A minus B, P. Here then the A and B is supposed to be the intercept and P is the price. And as I said to you, minus P is the slope of this curve, which help us to draw this, uh, let's say, linear equation. And A over B is the chalk price. Let's go to see how it is going to be. The linear demand curve, the elasticity is as it is given to you, delta Q over delta P is multiplied with P over Q. Then as you see delta Q over delta P, since it is the slope, then we may um, insert instead of delta Q over delta P, the B, so-called the slope, which is negative. Then we multiplying the initial price and quantity, which is P over Q, the initial price, an initial quantity in this uh, case. So far linear demand curves is supposed to be, then slope is expected to constant and elasticity falls from zero to minus infinity along the demand curve. And suppose if it is employed with the numbers, numerical example, then 400 minus 10 P, then we have to put then minus 10 to the equation as you are observing the initial price is given here 30 and Q is 100. Therefore, when we are going to employ the elasticity formula, delta Q over delta P multiplied with P over Q will then give you, then insert the slope again, minus P, which is minus 10, then multiplying with the initial price and the quantity, which is 30 over 100, 
then this will then give you minus three, which is above one, then this is an elastic demand suggested is then the, we may say the price of this product, when the price change is realized, then the demand is affected heavily because there is an elastic demand here, interpretation. The elasticity linear demand curve, when we are representing here, as you are observing here, the elastic region for the linear, we are talking about not nonlinear, we are talking about linear equations. The elastic region is in the equilibrium where <coughs> the slope is supposed to be realized, where it is intercept and it is uh, A over 2B is the elasticity of price for demand is minus 1. And above this is the elastic region, and below this is supposed to be inelastic region, which is minus one and zero is the inelastic, and above minus one is the elastic region. As we are observing in the example, we have three, then it will be then expected to be uh, in the upper part of this curve. For the nonlinear curves, as you are observing here, the flatter part of curve become more elastic as you are observing the lower part of this now. And the vertical part of this curve is the inelastic, now vice versa of this, isn't it? You see the upper part now is inelastic and lower part for the nonlinear equations, there is, uh, if it is below, then it is, of course, become more elastic if it is flatter, this CD part. And if it is above, where the A is, is supposed to be then more uh, inelastic. Flatter part is the part where it is becoming to the x-axis more parallel or becoming more flatter. A constant elastic demand curve. <clears throat> now we have again nonlinear equation. QD is supposed to be A P power of epsilon. As you see, this epsilon is the elasticity because in such uh, equations we are using this as elasticity and it is represented as you see A is the constant, P is the price, and power of P is the elasticity because it is the elasticity. The formula then here, delta Q over delta P, multiplied P over Q, will then epsilon A power, we're going to derivate it, then the power of epsilon minus 1, then multiplied it P over Q, then this will then give you the epsilon, which is the elasticity. Therefore, you then need to calculate any elasticity in such questions, in such equations. And if you see the power of this, then you may take it, directly as elasticity for your knowledge. So far, constant elasticity demand curves, then elasticity is constant, slope falls from zero to infinity along the demand curve. And a constant elasticity versus linear demand curve, as we are observing, the price and the quantity is given here, and the equation is also represented with this linear demand curve. And if it is constant elastic demand curve, it is a little bit more, uh, let's say, curvy. And if it is then then constant elastic demand curve, then linear demand curve is then represented together. And the constant elastic versus linear demand curve is represented there. Then the elasticity factors that determine the price elasticity for demand and demands tend to become or to be more price elastic when there are good substitutes for the good, which is expected because you have the alternative. You have, for example, Cadbury and Milo, for example, the Nigerian and the African popular chocolate, the chocolate. Uh, if the Cadbury chocolate price goes up, you prefer more Milo or KitKat or Nestle products. This is how it is. Therefore, the diversification in the market is always a pressure to hold the price in a stable level because in monopoly, sorry, in monopoly markets, 
if there isn't sufficient producer, then the price can be very highly affected and shifted without any uh, problem, any hesitation to the upper level. But if there is the rivals in the market, like in the game theory, zero sum game, everybody try to capture part of the market and this will then reduce and affect the market structure and prevent this, uh, let's say, higher prices and the uh, price movements up and down because of this uh, market structure. The rivals are, let's say, uh, controlling and inspecting each other's, uh, let's say, uh, uh, policy and the uh, ability to change the price from one to the other level because they are not able to maintain their market structure or capacity or percentage. And if the demand tend to be more price elastic when consumer expenditure in the good is large, which means uh, if there is sufficient consumer expenditure, then, then the price becomes more elastic again. And the demand tends to be less price elastic when consumers consider the good is as a necessity, which is, uh, as I said, men mentioned to you, uh, necessary foodstuff, uh, water, poultry, cereals, some meat and some other daily products, you're going to consume everyday life and the price become inelastic and vice versa, price become elastic if it is uh, not considered to be in the uh, necessary foodstuff. And when we're going to look to the example, the elasticity of demand for the selected uh, uh, items, uh, soft drinks, elasticity, as you see, it is very high, minus 3.18, which is elastic. And can't see food, it is 1.79, minus, of course, 1.79. It is, again, elastic. And can't soup, it, it is minus 1.62, again, elastic. Cookies, one point. As you see, these are all not necessary foodstuff. It is foodstuff, but not necessarily to be bought. 1.6 and breakfast cereals, as I mentioned to you, 0.2. This has meant in the uh, America, mostly people consuming cereals. And it is very inelastic. Toilet paper, it is 2.40. Actually, toilet paper is very... Uh, used every day, every people's uh, consumption, but it is very high. Probably they don't use or they prefer something else. And laundry detergent is 1.50. Mostly it is also inelastic, but in some cases it is elastic because there are some other, uh, let's say, preferences for using. And this has meant that there is a reduction. Uh, on the preferences and toothpaste as you see everybody use this um, for brushing their teeth and it is 0.45 it is inelastic snacks crackers it should be inel it should be elastic but unfortunately it is inelastic because everybody consume uh, abundantly and it is elastic inelastic sorry and frozen entries again 0.77 is inelastic paper towels is Inelastic 0.05 and dish detergent again 0.74 because everybody used and fabric softener it is 0.7. These are the things that they are using in everyday life and this is supposed to be in the agenda they are having uh, regularly consuming. If it is below one and if it is above, then they don't. And then we are look to the let's say automobile, the Mazda. Price is 5,000 something, the Nissan 5,600 something, Ford Escort 5,600 something, and Lexus 27 something, and BMW 37 something. And when we look to the estimated elasticity, it is 6, minus 6 of course, minus 6.3, minus 6.5, 6.0, 3.0, and 3.5. These are all 
elastic uh, demand because not everybody using and consuming or driving cars. There are some other alternatives, some transportation, uh, let's say public transportation, or they don't uh, use uh, car because of they are not uh, having this uh, welfare or they don't use because they don't have any uh, necessity or any need. Uh, the public transportation is better than these um, uh, alter alternatives. But it is, as you are observing, is very high. But uh, since it is uh, high, the consumption is depending to the exportation and importation and the other <clears throat> market structure, which is affecting and changing the uh, preferences. Uh, this was the first first part of our class. Do you want me to continue the next part or you want me to, to stop here and continue next lecture? Let me open the second part and tell you. Okay, this was the second part. It is 63 uh, pages. I will go some pages, some three, four pages and stop because this will be longer, I think. Uh, I will go some, then finish it, okay? Is that okay? Because uh, next lecture will be then too much for us. Is it okay for you? Yes, it's okay. Okay. Uh, we are going here, the individual demand curves, income and substitution effects, we will be introduced, will be introduced to you, and we will show the trade-off, consumer surplus, contracting aggregate, demand in the given scenario. The income consumption curves, uh, as you know, the goods X is the set of optimal basket for every possible income level. Assume all other variables remain constant. What is happening? Let's see. You see income consumption curve has meant as much as your income is increasing. You know what I think these things, the U is the indifference curve. Uh, this uh, vertex, uh, this is line, uh, this um, uh, linear line is the budget line. U uh, curve is the indifference curve, which means um, line is the budget line and I is the uh, budget, I is the budget line, sorry, sorry budget constraint and U is the indifference curve. And as much as your income changes, it is shifting Excuse to the me, upper me, level. Professor. Yes, please. Hello, sir. I yes. can't see the figure what you are seeing. I'm just saying the table here. You don't see? No. Oh. OK, I, I will I will close the other one. I think I have to close the other one. What about now? Now you are able to see or you don't? I don't You see. don't. Okay, I will, ah, uh, but, but before also you didn't see, or you will see now. The last, the, before you were seeing, you see the no, former, sir. you didn't see the former also. Didn't see, yes. I was Why? saying the table, not the former. But former slides you didn't see? Or you see? No. Why you didn't no, warn me? No, I didn't. Why you, why you didn't warn um? me? Why you didn't warn me? Oh my goodness. You didn't see any slides up to now? No. Oh my goodness. We see your first. That's what I asked you. Huh? The first one I think part of presentation. Next, you you were saying I didn't see. It. The second part that I uploaded now you didn't see. Yes, no. sir. But the first part, the first uh, PowerPoint, you see, you saw. Yes, it was yes. okay. Yes. You saw everything. Yes. But the second second part that I am uploaded now you didn't see. Yes. Okay, yes, okay, okay. But now I am going to share with you, then you will see. Okay, now you will see. Okay, now you yes. see. Isn't it? Yes. yes. Okay, thank yes. you. Because the bot is op was open, then it was the problem. Now you are able to see, isn't it? Yes, we see. Yes. 
Okay, good, Tony. Okay, as I said to you, we are going to uh, employ now the second part of this uh, elasticity. And before going to estimate the elasticity, we have to know the budget line, indifference curve, the applications, the substitution effect, the complementary, and of course, substitution goods, uh, substitute, substitution, substitution effects, how it is affecting and changing the consumer surplus. These things will be introduced to you on the graphs. And as you see, the income consumption curve is going to be introduced to you for the flashback to the former classes for being able to understand how it is going to affect and change the um, budget line or so-called the budget constraint. As you know, budget constraint here is given the Y is the income and X is the amount of the something, isn't it? As you see, the I here is the this this line, this linear line, and U is the curve where it is the indifference curve. When the budget constraint, budget line is tangent to the uh, indifference curve, we suppose the equilibrium, we suppose there is equilibrium. And the equation is P x x plus P y y is equal to I, which means the price of the x multiplied with the x and the price of the y is multiplied with the y unit will gives us the I. This means on this curve where the units of y and x units of these two good combination will create our income consumption curve will create our budget constraint where it is tangent to the indifference curve. On this curve, the budget constraint I is supposed to be 40 and where it is tangent to the uh, line, this uh, budget line, as you see, it is becoming 10. And after X is enlarged because the income is supposed to be enlarged, it is shifted to the red one. It is shifted to the I where it is 68 because the income now becomes 68. And if the income is shifted to the higher level, to the 92, this will then shift to the economy of this person or the uh, disposable income to the $92, let's say, or 92 unit. And this will then give you the upper level of this income consumption curve where it is higher than the second U2 and the first one also. This is the best possible option for the given scenario. And vice versa is possible as much as the income is reduced in any cases because of this, uh, let's say, uh, tax, uh, uh, let's say increase of the tax or something else, or let's say inflation or something else. This will then cause some reduction and reduce the welfare of this person. Uh, the income consumption curve is coming from the tangent points where U1, U2, and U3 tangent to the uh, budget constraints on the curves where it is I is 40, I is 68, and I is 92. And the U3, U2, and U1 is tangent to these lines. And after this crossing this all together, then you will get the income consumption curve regarding to this uh, given example. And uh, the points on the income consumption curve can be graphed as a point uh, on a shifting demand curve. The income consumption curve, as you are observing here, when you are drawing this, we will then represent it with the below given, as you see here, the X and price, we will then gen now representing with the units and the price we are putting on the graph and showing how it is affecting and shaving the, uh, shifting the uh, indifference curve to the upper level. As you see, it is shifted to the upper level because of this price change, because of this income changes. And as you see, again, it is shifted because income becomes enlarged as much as the price is not changing just because the income supposed to be shifted from 40 to 68 to 92. And the angle curves, the income consumption curve for goods X can also be written as the quantity consumed of goods X for any income level. This is the individual's angle curve for goods X. 
and the angle curve can be represented as you are observing here. Similarly, with the given scenario, as you see, the I is the disposable income, 40, 68, and 92, and X is the units that is shifting and upload to the higher level from 10 to 18 to 24. Then this, the intersection of this uh, points where the budget line and the indifference curve intersecting each other's and crossing this line, we are getting this angle curve. And the angle curve is when the slope of the income consumption curve is positive, the slope of the angle curve is also positive, supposed to be. And now we are going to the definitions of the goods for the normal goods to the, uh, let's say, inferior goods and some others. Let me see. Income consumption. Okay, up to there, I will explain and stop there. Okay, the definitions for the normal goods, if the income consumption curve shows that the consumer purchases more of goods, X as her income rises, goods supposed to be normal goods. You are understanding, consume more X as income rises, this is normal. Equivalently, if the slope of the angle curve is positive, the goods is supposed to be normal good and inferior goods if the income consumption curve shows that consumer purchase is less of the x as her income rises goods x is inferior goods such as uh, snacks or some other chocolate and some other junk food that you are eating in everyday life if the price is supposed to be income increased, but the price stay intact and the consumption is some reduced and of course not changed and this is then somehow inferior. The equivalent, if the slope of the angle curve is negative, the good is normal good. A good can be normal over some ranges of income and inferior over others. And it is indicated the backward bending angle curve as represented here, as I mentioned to you. If it is going backside, this has meant there is somehow inferior. As you see, the angle curve, the consumption, because if it is increasing, this is normal. If it is going back, then it is somehow supposed to be negatively affecting and changing. These effects or impacts will be introduced to you here in the next lecture. The income effect, the substitution effect will be introduced to you in the next lecture with the applications. But for today, I think it is enough. I will stop here. One hour is over. The next lecture, we will start here to see how it is affecting and changing the individual demand curve when the price changes, realize how the income effects and substitution effect realize. And then we will go to the uh, other uh, elasticity problems in the microeconomics. If you do have any question, please ask me. If not, then I will stop here. Uh, I think it's enough. You will study. I will upload these uh, files to you also. You will study. I have also a YouTube channel and I, I will upload these uh, videos because only uh, watching, uh, only downloading these PowerPoints is not enough because I am explaining the conditions comprehensively. If you go to the Ergin Akalbler or Ergin Akalbler, Ergin Fikri Akalbler to YouTube, then you will you will you will see in Google my uh, my files that I'm uploading for you, and then you will watch also you can subscribe and watch these videos for uh, repeating the lesson and comprehensively you will understand probably better for your exams. And if you have any question, then you will write me email or if you have any problem, you can contact me from WhatsApp group. If you are creating any, then I will definitely respond to you. OK. OK, Professor. OK, then then uh, see you then next week on Friday again for these applications. Thank you very okay. much for your joining. Thank, Thank you. For bye bye. Professor, our classes start our time. Tell me, please. We are supposed to be starting our time, please. Starting time. I said uh, 19.30, isn't it? 7.40, you said. Yes, 19 yes, is 7. 7 yes, Yes, 19 is 7, actually. 7.30 yes. or 19.30. I didn't say 9, 19. 
Seven thirteen or nineteen thirty. Okay. Is it clear? Okay, then yes, thank, sir. You, thank you. Thank you. Uh, because I have PhD class before you and I need some uh, 10 to 15 minutes break to refresh myself, okay? Because I am a little bit uh, tired after class. Okay, then see you then next week. Have a nice uh, weekend. Bye -bye. Thank, you, bye -bye. You too. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Bye-bye.